When you're starting out making music, it's pretty easy to be overwhelmed by all the tech and all the gear that you can end up spending all of your money on. Not to mention all the time you spend researching and figuring out what you really need. Do you really need these speakers? Or this console? Or these effects? So, in this episode, I'm going to try to give you a guide on what you really need in order to start creating orchestral mock-ups and what you can, and probably should, actually do without. You'll have obviously realised that I'm here in my bedroom. Nothing fancy really, just not too much space for anything else. Actually, I just sleep behind here. And honestly, I can't even begin to fathom how I'd make any music without all of this stuff. Well, obviously I'm not being serious here. Personally, I don't need any of this stuff, and I certainly didn't need any of it when I was starting out. So, let's get out of here and go to somewhere a bit more realistic. So, we're in a more realistic location now, and we need to talk about the basic gear that you need to get started making music. Now, this isn't meant to be a deep dive into the bleeding edge of technology. This is just about the basics and what you need to get started. Okay, what first? The first thing is we need a computer. Next, we need an audio interface. And then we need some headphones to plug into it. And maybe we should chuck in a MIDI keyboard too. Well, there is more to it. Well, let's start with the most important thing, the computer. You can get Macs or you can get PCs. It doesn't really matter. In the end, they do the same things. But there may be some effects to consider down the line, depending on the software that you need or the obvious thing, the budget. We all know that you can get equivalently spec PCs far cheaper than you can Macs. What's important is the spec of the computer. We're working with orchestral sample libraries here, and sample libraries need RAM, they need a decent CPU, and they need hard drive space. These days, the CPU isn't really the bottleneck. It does still matter though, so I'd still recommend you have something recent, like an i5 or an i7 or AMD equivalent if you're on PC, or an Apple Silicon Mac, or one of the decent Intel processors from their previous lineup. But assuming the processor isn't ancient, the bottleneck is really the RAM. Sample libraries load the starts of each sample into your RAM to allow it to stream from the hard drives without glitches. So the more RAM you have, the more you can load, and the better everything runs. The minimum you need these days is 16 gigabytes. Operating systems will eat up the first few gig anyway, and the libraries with lots of mic positions and legatos and so on will also eat up your RAM quickly. 16 gigabytes is the minimum, not the maximum, so I recommend you just get as much as you can. These days, a computer that can have a lot of RAM will be a good indicator that the CPU is good enough as well. The next thing is hard drives. This is about space and speed, and assuming you don't have a massive internal drive on your computer, you're going to need an external drive for your sample libraries. This is a public service announcement. Do not buy HDDs for your sample libraries. The argument here is that HDDs have more space for less money, but the speed of these drives is not fast enough to run big sample libraries from. You need SSDs for this, and the bigger you can get, the more libraries you can store on them. And there are two types of SSDs, SATA and NVMe. SATA drives are older, and they're fine, but they're slower than NVMe drives. These NVMe's can be anywhere up to 10 times faster, but they can also come with extra cost, especially if you're needing Thunderbolt enclosures for these things. But the prices are coming down, and so it's worth being aware of this so that you can future-proof. But really, either will be fine as long as you're connecting with USB 3 speeds or above. Okay, next I said that we need an interface. Now let's not go crazy here. We're not talking about the world's best conversion or the best preamps. We're just talking about good value, good quality for a small setup. Now there's something that's often overlooked here, bundled software. The best interface for you is gonna be the one that comes with some bundled software that you actually use, be it a DAW, plugins, synths, sample libraries, even headphone correction software. At this end of the interface market, they're all decent. You may have slightly different connections on the back, you might want an ADAT port or two preamps instead of one, or something more centered around guitar inputs and so on but what you really need them for is to have decent drivers for the computer so that you have less latency in your software. And for headphones. Now you can work on speakers, obviously, but I'd still recommend that you get a decent pair of headphones. Not only is this useful if you're on the move, but probably you can get a better result from good headphones than you can from half decent speakers in a less than half decent room. So headphones might be a better reference for working on your music. Again, there are loads of options, but I'm gonna give you my opinion here. 
I've had these Bayer Dynamic DT250s since I started university, and they've never failed me, they've never broken, and even if they do, they have replaceable parts. And all of the other known brands like AKG, Sony, Sennheiser, and so on, they all have something similar too. What you should also be thinking about is how long you'll be using these for, and how comfortable they are, because headphones will obviously wear your ears out faster than speakers do. So you have a computer, you have an interface, you have some headphones, what next? We need some software. We need a DAW, a digital audio workstation, like Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, Studio One, FL Studio, Ableton Live, and there are a few more out there, obviously, even some completely free software. Now, these kind of all do the same thing, but they have different specialities, and they can vary in price or even have subscription options. You want to pick one that you already have some understanding of or one that you're ready to really learn. What's important is that you put the time in. They all do the same thing in the end. It's the user and not the software that makes the music. Now, lastly, you have all of this stuff, but you're gonna need something to help you input your music. And it's pretty common with orchestral sample libraries to have something like this. This is the one that I travel around with. It literally fits in my backpack and it's got some nice rotary knobs here for MIDI CCs. And honestly, it's pretty good, but you might want something bigger. What about something like this? You might want something bigger and snazzier, especially if you're a keys player. And I have something like this at my studio at home. So here I am at home in my studio in London. Now, you can see I'm surrounded by the basic gear as well as a few extras. I've got my 88 note MIDI keyboard here so I can have the full range of the keys in front of me. I've got some speakers as well as my trusty Bayer Dynamic DT250s. And I've got a MIDI interface behind me with faders for MIDI CCs. But the real reason I wanted to invite you here is to give you my personal insight into the gear that I use when I'm traveling around. Now, I don't have a laptop, I use a Mac Mini, and there is a philosophy behind this. I tend to travel a lot between London and Malaysia, and so I try and keep similar gear in my two little studio rooms wherever I am. And the Mac Mini has ports on the back, it has I.O., and it means wherever I am, I can just plonk it down on the desk, plug everything in, and away we go. All I have to do is bring my hard drives and my computer, and when I'm traveling elsewhere, I bring that MIDI keyboard and audio interface that I showed you earlier, plus a USB hub, and a portable screen. Now, while this is getting away from basic gear, it's all very practical. But when I was first starting out, I definitely bought some stuff that was very impractical. The first unnecessary thing I bought was a big audio interface with loads of inputs and outputs, a Motu 828 Mark III. And the reason I bought this is because I thought I needed a 5.1 setup. And so I also bought five of these and a big subwoofer. And I spent loads of money that could and should have been better spent elsewhere. One thing that was a great purchase though, was my computer. I got a 2009 Mac Pro, and it served me all the way up until 2020 when I got my Mac Mini. It was upgradable and it did get seriously modded, but that's really great value for what I got out of it. There are quite a few other flashing lights around here as well, a good handful of synthesizers, but as they're moving away from the basics, I thought this would be a good time to wrap up and head back to Telgex. So I hope I could give you some insight into what you might need and what you don't. But just for the record, it's not like rooms like this have no purpose. Hopefully one day you'll be in a studio just like this, surrounded by all of this gear that you can dream about with all of these cool things at your disposal. But until then, you can still make amazing music with much simpler technology. To finish off, I'm gonna share one more thing with you. The one thing that when I was starting out actually did make all the difference. And it wasn't any tech or anything with a flashing light. It was a book. In my case, it was a book on orchestration. I bought it when I was 18 during the summer before I went to university. And it taught me loads about notation, instrumentation, orchestration, and it was a real catalyst that helped me getting started making music with samples. And now I really am being honest, I probably learned more from this than many other sources of information. The thing I want to remind you is that you can and absolutely should invest in yourself. And whether it's a course or a music teacher or a good book, you're going to want more than just a computer and a few bits of gear to start making good music. And a little bit of knowledge goes a long way.